Okay, so good morning ulit. Uh, topic natin ngayon is yung natitira na lang sa conic sections. Lips and hyperbola. Of course, meron pang sabay topic for degenerate cases. Yung points and lines. But uh, that will be on another um, discussion. Okay, pagsasabihin ko ngayon, like I've said before, yung ellipse and hyperbola kasi they only differ in one word sa kanilang definition at halos magkamukha magkamukha sila sa standard equation but of course they differ in graph okay let's see what ellipse and hyperbola is okay for ellipse say we have two distinct points tawagin natin silang f1 and f2 and then we trace or uh the set of all points P na kung saan yung distance from F1 and F2 kapag pinag-add ko is always a certain constant the set of all points there or the set the locus of all points that satisfy this condition is called an ellipse so any point uh, conversely ibig sabihin nitong definition natin is any point in the ellipse okay laging yung distance from two distinct points, yung sum nila is always a constant. Okay. Yung dalawang distinct points na yun, yung tinatawag natin foci, or dalawang focus. Plural is foci pala. Foci. Okay. F1 and F2. So, ganito po yung anyang um, how an ellipse is constructed. So, yung dalawang points yan, yung red and blue, or I think that's orange and blue or purple, ano man yan, yun po yung dalawang foci, focus 1, focus 2. Okay? Yung tinitrace natin is yung set of all points na kung saan yung distance niya is all, uh, sum ng distances dito sa dalawang points na to is always equal. So, as it moves, as you can see, yung red, yung length ng uh, orange line and yung a length ng purple line, pag pinagsama natin, laging constant. Ibig sabihin, pare, uh, parehas lang. Parehas yung sum. Okay? Pag pinagdugtong-dugtong natin lahat ng points na yun, mapoform natin yung tinatawag natin ellipse. Okay? Uh, this is also one way to tag dito understand, kung matatandaan nyo yung circle, set of all points na equidistant from a certain point or if from a fixed point called the center. Okay? Yun yung basihan nya, yung center. Okay? Yung parabola, set of all points sya na kung saan equidistant sya from a fixed point called the focus and a fixed line called the directrix. ba? So, si circle, ang kanyang basis is a fixed point. Si parabola, ang kanyang basis is a fixed point and fixed line. Si ellipse, dalawang fixed point. Okay. The sum of the distances from any point in the ellipse to these two fixed point called the foci, foci is always constant. Dalawang point naman yung basihan or yung basis ngayon para ma-form or reference ngayon para ma-form yung ellipse. Okay, and just as other conic sections, merong standard equation, of course, ang ellipse. Meron din siyang mga parts, no? So, ito ang standard equation po ng ellipse centered at the origin. Okay, uh, hindi ko na siya i-derive, but as you know, from the definition itself, yung sum nung two points from uh, sum ng distances from any point in the ellipse to the two fixed point is always equal. So, ang gagawin mo lang para ma-derive is uh, kunin mo lang yung distance formula, dalawa, any point to the focus 1 and focus 2. I-add mo yung distance na yun and then equate mo sa fixed constant. Okay, nasa libro nyo kung paano siya na-derive to save time, I will leave it up to you, but uh, 
ating conclusion, yung magiging standard equation ng ating ellipse centered at the origin, 0, 0 would be like this. x squared all over a squared plus y squared all over b squared equals 1. x squared all over b squared plus y squared equals over a squared equals 1 kapag patayo naman. So, dalawa yung magiging case natin. It's like, kung sa parabola, pwede siyang mag-open sa the right or pwede open sa the left. Dito naman, pwede horizontal yung major axis. Pwede rin namang vertical yung major axis. Okay, let's discuss the parts. Okay, of course, sinabi niya na dito, meron tayong or, uh, center. Okay, center. Center is yung mismong centro. <laughs> It, uh, it is the intersection, intersection point of the major and minor axis. Yun po yung center. Gitna, mismo. So, dito nga, center natin is sa origin. Yung dalawang focus is collinear with the center. Ibig sabihin, yung focus 1, focus 2, at saka yung center ay nasa isang linya po. And they are always on the major axis. Uh, kung sa parabola yung center uh, yung vertex to focus na distance is we called C dito naman po sa ellipse yung C is the center to focus na distance isulat natin dito center to focus na distance okay isa lang ha center to focus kasi ang plural ng, plural ng focus ay foci so yung distansya mula sa center papunta sa isang focus is either F1 or F2 is C. Ayan. And of course, equal yan kasi si center gitna ng gitna. So, si center nasa gitna ng F1 and F2, focus 1 and focus 2. So, yung distance between the center papunta rin sa pangalawang focus, that is also C. Okay. Yung ating dulo, yung pinakamalayong point mula sa center is called vertex. Okay. Kung si parabola, ba meron lang siyang isang vertex, meron din lang siyang isang focus. Dito, dalawa. Meron siyang dalawang focus, dalawa din yung vertex niya. Okay. Vertex 1, vertex 2, yun yung pinaka-dulo. Pinaka-malayong point mula sa center. That is still within the ellipse. Yung distance or yung line na V1, V2, that is called the major axis. Mula sa V1, papunta kay V2, this is called the major axis. Ayan. Yan po ang major axis. At yung distance mula sa center, papunta sa isang vertex, is called the semi-major axis. Semi kasi kalahati ng Major axis, semi-major axis. Center to vertex, one vertex. Yung vertex to vertex, that is major axis. Yung kalahate or yung center to vertex, that is the semi-major axis. Yung semi-major axis, okay, sabihin na natin center to vertex, ang distance na po yun is a. Yung A na yun, yun actually yung nandito sa ilalim ng ating equation. Standard equation. Yun yung A dito sa A squared. Ito po yun. Yung length ng semi-major axis, yun po yung A. Kung meron po tayong major axis, meron din tayong minor axis. Okay. Ano naman yung minor axis? As you can see, Meron tayong vertex, ba? Meron tayong hangganan doon sa major axis. Pero meron din tayong hangganan doon sa minor axis. Okay, ang tawag po natin dito sa points W2 and W1, that is called 
the co-vertices. Okay? Tandaan po natin yan, ha? Yung vertex is located in the major axis. Or, vertex, or the vertices, the vertices are the endpoints of the major axis. Yung co-vertices are the endpoints of the minor axis naman. So, yung mas maikli. Okay? Bakit siya tinawag na minor, minor and major? Yung major, mas mahaba kesa dun sa minor axis. So, yung W1, W2, which is the line connecting the co-vertices, that is what we call the minor axis. Okay. The center to co-vertex, yun yun actually B. Or that is what we call the semi-minor axis. Okay. Kung yung, uh, yung buong W1 to W2, that is what we call the minor axis, yung kalahati niya po is the semi-minor axis. The same as yung semi-major ay kalahati ng major. Okay? Tapos, yung length po ng semi-minor, yun naman po yung B. Center to covertex yun, or the semi-minor axis. Lagyan natin ng parenthesis. Ang A is the length of the semi-major axis at yung B is the length of the semi-minor axis. Yan lamang ba ang uh, parts ng ellipse? Yan lang po. Okay, meron kang center, meron kang dalawang focus na kalinya ng center, meron kang dalawang vertex na kalinya rin ng focus. And then, meron kang dalawang co-vertices. Major axis is the distance between the two vertices. Minor axis is the... And uh, minor axis is yung line between the two co-vertices. Kalahati ng major, semi-major, and that is denoted by letter A. Kalahati ng minor, that is semi-minor, and yung distance is denoted by B. Okay. Kung makikita po natin, kapag sa derivation, actually, kurang ko na, yung fixed distance na tinatawag, or yung constant distance, or constant sum ng distances from the focus, to any point, actually, yun yung 2A or twice the major axis. Ito po yung 2A. Diba? Ito yung major axis. Kung yung kalahati ng major, uh, ng major axis ay, t, ay A, syempre, yung buong major axis, that is 2A. Okay. My relationship actually yung C which is the center to focus, A, center to vertex, at saka yung B, center to co-vertices. Kung mapapansin natin, di ba, kung yung any point, sabihin natin nandito yung point natin, W2, any point, uh, fix yung distance, or sum ng distance between F1 and F2. And if sabi natin na yung sum ng distance, is 2A, dahil symmetric to, A ito, tsaka A din iyan. E di ba yung length ng semi-major axis ay B, at yung length ng center to focus ay C, we can see, we can form a right triangle, and we can derive yung relationship ng A, B, and C dito po sa ating ellipse. A is actually the hypotenuse. So, A squared is actually B squared plus C squared. Okay? Hindi siya kamukha ng Pythagorean theorem. Kasi di ba yung Pythagorean theorem or yung alam natin, C squared yon, because A squared plus B squared. 
As you can see kasi dito, mas mahaba po yung A. Okay. So, yan po yung relationship ng um, A, B, and C. Ano po ulit yung A? Yun yung length ng semi-major uh, axis. B, length ng semi-minor axis. C, the distance from focus to center. Okay. Kung mapapansin po natin, dun sa kanilang standard equation, anong pinagkaiba? Kapag yung ating major axis ay horizontal, that is, yung A natin ay pahiga or can be parallel to the x-axis, nasa ilalim mismo ng length ng semi-major axis yung x. Kasi yung mas mahabang part niya or yung major axis ay horizontal. Pero pag naging patayo na, see, yung major axis natin, major mas mahaba, yung mas mahabang part or axis ni ellipse, ay nasa Y na, lumipat na ngayon si A. Napunta na siya doon sa ilalim ni Y squared. Okay, huwag po tayong confuse. Actually, that is one way para ma maintindihan mo or ma makuha mo kung ano ang magiging itsura ng graph niya. Okay, lagi nakadepende kung nasaan si focus, nasaan si vertex, at nasaan yung major axis. Si vertex, si focus, ay lagi pong nakalocate within the major axis. Kung si, kung si major axis ay horizontal, which means pahiga, dapat dun sa standard equation niya, nasa ilalim siya ni yung A ay nasa ilalim na X squared. X kasi pahiga. Kasi nga, horizontal yung major axis. Ganun po para matandaan natin. Kung yung vertex at yung focus is still nasa major axis, at yung major axis natin ay vertical, dapat si A ay nasa ilalim ni Y. Okay? Si A yun lagi po yung uh, length ng semi-major axis. Yun lagi yung notation natin. Okay? At sinusundan niya kung nasaan yung major axis. Ulitin natin, kapag yung major axis natin ay pahiga, dapat yung A, which is the semi-major axis, dapat nasa ilalim ni x squared. Kung yung semi-major axis natin ay patayo, or vertical, dapat nasa ilalim ni AC, Y squared. Pwede naman actually pagbalik ta rin itong equation na to. Kasi minsan yung ibang book, inuuna, ang ginagawa is inuuna lagi yung kung nasaan yung uh, major axis. Uh, sorry, B dapat. Yan. Pero wala namang kaso kasi, tawag dito. Um, addition naman siya, it parehas naman silang positive lagi para maging ellipse siya. So, okay lang. Parehas lang yung ibig sabihin niya. Basta, yun lang naman yung tatandaan natin. Kung ano ang orientation ng major axis, doon dapat nakapailalim yung A natin. Kasi si A, as our notation, A is the length of the semi-major axis, B is the length of the semi-minor axis, and C is the center to focus distance. Distance to center, from center to focus. Okay, yun lamang yung parts ng ating ellipse. At yan yung standard equation niya. Sir, paano po kung yung standard, uh, yung equation natin, or yung ellipse natin is wala na sa origin? Okay, we can generalize this um, equation to any point HK. Kagaya ng ginawa natin sa parabola at sa circle, lalagyan lang natin ng minus minus h and minus k dun sa loob ng x bago natin siya i-square. Ayan. Um, this is the same way sa mga ginagawa natin sa circle and parabola. Ganyan din po sa ellipse. And mamaya, ganun din sa hyperbola. But still, kung nasaan po or anong orientation ng 
uh, major axis, nakapailalim pa rin siya kung anong uh, under sa axis. Kung pahiga, under siya ng x. Nasa ilalim siya ng x squared. Kung patayo yung ellipse mo, nasa ilalim siya ng y squared. Pwede mo rin balik ta rin yun, vice versa. Kung nasa ilalim ng uh, a, o nasa ilalim yung may x squared si a squared, dapat um, pahiga yung ating major axis, pahiga yung ellipse. Okay, tandaan natin na, uh, ito hindi ko pala nasabi kanina, si a doon sa right triangle natin, siya yung hypotenuse, ba diba? Ito. So, tandaan natin, that dahil si A ang hypotenuse when we uh, created the relationship between A, B, and C tandaan natin that A is gre always greater than B laging mas malaki si major axis kay minor axis kaya nga tinawag na major tsaka minor and also gray A is greater than C okay so how about B Okay, well, yung relationship ni Ben C uh, can be anything. Be equal. Basta, uh, tandaan natin, the right triangle at si A hypotenuse. Si A lagi ang pinakamalaki. So, A is greater than B and A is also greater than C. So, makakatulong yan pag nakita natin yung standard equation, nire-write natin sa standard equation. Kung saan yung mas malaki, lagi doon sa ilalim, doon yung laging A. Yun lagi yung major or semi-major axis. Okay. Mapapansin din natin na sir para lang naman yang circle pero para lang siyang tawag dito, circle na naipit kumbaga na mas uh, hinila kumbaga bilog na hinila kaya hindi na siya bilog, naging oblong na. Actually, that is correct kasi as you can see, kapag nag-equal si A at saka si B dun sa ating equation So, for example, nasa center is origin siya. Kapag nag-equal si A at B, so, pwede natin palitan si dito, si B dito ng A, or si B ng A, or si B, A ng B. Dahil nga A equals B. And we get actually X plus Y squared equals A squared. And that is actually circle. So, ibig sabihin, kapag nag equal po yung length ng major axis at saka yung minor axis or when A equals B dun sa standard equation natin ang nagiging itsura niya is actually a circle nagiging bilog siya yan, perfectly circular kasi nga, equal na yung A at saka si B okay, pero hindi mo na ito matatawag na ellipse kasi, di ba, by definition natin ng ellipse dapat A is greater than B. Okay. But circle, circle is an ellipse. Okay. Let's try to solve examples. Let's solve examples. So, I have here two examples only. Give the coordinates of the center, vertices, co-vertices, and foci of the ellipse with the given equation. Sketch a graph and include these points. Number one, as you can see, x squared all over 169 plus y squared all over 25 equals 1. And number two, okay, wala tayong problema sa number one. Uh, konting uh, rewriting lang, konting uh, twitching, naka-standard form na siya. Number 2, naka-standard, uh, naka-general equation siya for conics. So, we have to, alam nyo na, para ma-convert from general to standard, we have to completely square. So, let's solve for number 1. So, number 1, uh, obviously, ang kanyang center ay nasa 0, 0. ba diba? Kasi walang naka-minus kay, kay x tsaka y. So, uh, obviously, yun kaagad yung sagot. Center, 0, 0 na kaagad. Di ba? Pakadali. Uh, by inspection pa lang. And we can actually rewrite para um, uh, ma-inspect natin or malaman natin yung value ni A and B or the semi-major axis and the semi-minor axis lengths of the semi-major and semi-minor 
uh, i-rewrite natin, dapat naka-perfect square yung ilalim eh. Naka A squared and B squared. So, uh, luckily, 169 is a perfect square and that is 13 squared. And then, 5 or 25 also is a perfect square. We can express that to be 5 squared and that is equal to 1. And since the standard equation is x squared all over a squared plus, or depende kung nasaan po yung major axis, pwedeng ganyan, or pwede rin namang ganito, dapat mas mahaba si a kay b. Okay, by inspection, you can see, yung nasa ilalim ni x squared is 13 squared. Yung nasa ilalim ni Uh, y squared is 5 squared. And by inspection to the standard equation natin, sabi natin, since A is greater than B, and therefore, ang A natin is 13. Kasi mas malaki si 13 kay 5. And B is also 5. And therefore, alam na natin, kung nasaan din, or kung ano ang orientation ng ellipse natin, dahil si 13 is the length of the semi-major axis, ang semi ma Ang major axis natin is twice that, which is 2 times 13, 26. Ang semi-major axis natin, or yung letter A, ay nasa ilalim ni x squared. Tama? Dahil ito nga si A. And therefore, ang magiging itsura ng ating... Dapat, yung ellipse natin is mas pahaba siya along the x axis kasi nandoon po yung semi-major axis or the major axis itself. So, kung dapat mas pahaba siya, ayan, sorry kung hindi perfect, dapat mas mahaba siya sa x kasi yung 13 which is bigger than 5 is nasa ilalim ni x. So, dahil ang origin natin, ay ang center natin is nasa 0,0 nandito at ang a is semi-major axis, ano ba yung semi-major axis? yun yung center to vertex. So, dalawa yung vertex natin. Meron tayong vertex 1, meron tayong vertex 2. Center to, A yan. And therefore, uusog tayo ng A units papunta kay V2, but A is 13. So, ang ano po ang coordinates ng V2 natin? 13 units to the right. Right? So, That is 13, 0. Kasi nga A itong distance niyan. Center to vertex A. Ganon, dito, ganon din dito sa kabila. Center to vertex A. Kasi yun po yung major axis. Sandaan nyo yan. Si major axis nandun lagi si vertex. Minor axis ko vertex. Nandito rin si focus. Focus. Ayan. So, kung yung vertex natin na isa is 13, ganun din yung isang vertex natin. Pero, dahil um, to the left tayo, magmove tayo to the left, ang magiging coordinates na vertex 1 ay negative 13, 0 naman. Kasi nga to the left ng 0, ng 0, 0. So, eto naman yung V1. Negative 13. Okay, how about the covertices? Tawagin na lang natin W1 and W2 ulit. So, ito si W1. Ito si W2. So, yung center papunta kay covertex, that is B. Ano po yung value ni B? 5. Okay, huwag tayong malilito. Ang adjustment natin is vertical. So, ang gagalawin lang natin is yung Y. Dito sa vertex, ang adjustment natin is horizontal. ba diba? nag-move tayo to the left and to the right. Kaya ang pinalitan natin or nag-add tayo ng A unit sa X. Sa vertex, ang movement po natin is vertical. So, hindi natin gagalawin yung X. Magdadagdag tayo sa Y. So, aangat tayo ng B units pataas. Dahil pataas, mag a tayo ng ano si B5. So, that is 5 units pataas, 0, 5. And then, 5 units pababa ng 0, 0, 0. 
negative 5. Symmetric actually yan. Uh, actually, you can divide. Uh, the, se the major axis divides the ellipse into two symmetric and equal parts. Ganon din si minor axis. Then, divide niya rin yung ellipse into two equal parts. And actually, pag hati hati natin yan, apat, no, bawat quadrant, magkakamuka, pero nirorotate lang natin. So, meron pa rin tayong symmetry dito sa ellipse. Yan, meron na tayong vertex, covertices. Ano pa yung mga pinapahanap sa atin? Center, top check, vertex, check, covertex, check. Ay, yung fo foci na lang. So, saan natin ilolocate yung foci? Si foci, tandaan natin, kalinya lagi ni vertex or ng dalawang vertices. Okay, pero kailangan muna natin kunin yung distance. Ang distance ni center to focus is C. Mula doon sa relationship nga natin, na ginawa A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared. Or C squared is A squared minus B squared. Kaya na suppose ko lang si B squared. So, I got 13 squared minus 5 squared. C squared is 169 minus 25. That is 144. Lumabas yung sagot. Okay. C, ang kailangan natin. So, you take the square root. And we get that C equals... 12. Okay, positive lang ang kunin natin kasi distance yung C. Okay, now we can now locate yung ating focus. Kasi yung center to focus is C ang um, distance. At nakuha natin na uh, 12 nga yung C. Again, yung focus ay kalinya ni vertex and therefore we are moving to the left and to the right. So, ang babaguhin lang natin kay center, kasi yun lang yung reference natin, is yung x coordinate lang. So, mag add at minus tayo ng 12 dun sa coordinate. So, ang focus 1 natin, dahil nandito siya sa kabila, to the left, ito po, to the left siya ng center, so negative 12, 0. And then, yung focus 2 naman, is to the right naman ni center so 12, 0 so ang galing po ulit si 12 dito po sa C kasi by notation natin si C po ang center to focus distance so yan na yung parts center, vertices, covertices and foci of ellipse number 1 Ito po yung mas magandang, ano niya, ayan. Mas magandang scaling din. Mas magandang graph. Center is at the origin. Vertices. Okay. Uh, medyo, kung bakit mali dito, baka sabihin nyo dito, sir, nasa 14 siya, hindi. Ito yung 14, negative 14. Ayan, gitna pa rin siya ng 12 and 14. Medyo meron ng negative, kaya medyo nausog. Kaya akala nyo 14. Negative 13 pa rin yan. Yan. As you can see, for example, number 2, we have a general equation. We have to rewrite it. So, the first thing to do is, of course, collect common terms and complete the square. 36 squared, uh, I'm just rearranging it, plus 20y squared, plus 120y, and let's transpose negative 396 to the right, we have positive 396. We will add something. Mm -hmm. Mm 
to complete the square, we will have to add. Pero kung ano yung inad natin dun sa left side, yun din yung i-add natin dun sa right side. Now, what are we going to add? Okay, it is easier if we factor 36 just like this. Okay. And then, of course, what is left? Uh, 144 divided by 36. is 4 so I uh, I finactor out ko lamang po itong 36 tapos ganyan na lang para mas madali siyang tignan actually mas madali rin i-complete yung square at mas madali rin natin makukuha yung A and B mamaya yung mga i-divide natin and ganun din po if a factor out ko si 20 dito sa kabila or sa Y so, we have 20 times the quantity y squared plus. Of course, that is 120y. So, what is left is y, uh, 6y plus a blank. And again, what is added on the left side should be also added on the right side. Now, mas madali na siyang i-complete the square kasi um, yung coefficient natin, do sa loob ng parenthesis, yung coefficient na ng x squared is 1. So, what are we going to add? Let's just divide negative 4 by 2, that is negative 2, and then you square it, that is positive 4. Plus 20 times y squared, same process for y squared plus 6y, to complete the square of the, yung nasa loob ng parenthesis, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 3 squared, that is 9. Okay, but don't forget, na yung inad po natin is hindi 4 and 9. Okay? Huwag po tayong mag-add ng 4 and 9 because remember, nag-factor out po tayo ng 36. Nag-factor out din tayo ng 20. So actually, what we are adding on the left side is 36 times 4. So dapat yun po yung i-add natin dito sa kabila. 36 times 4 is 144. And then, dun sa y naman, ang inad in natin is 20 times 9. So, that is 180. We added 180. Ayan. Yung nasa loob na ng parenthesis is now a perfect square. That is x minus 2 squared. The same is true for y squared plus 6y plus 9. That is y plus 3 squared. Uh, simplify the right side. 396 plus 144 plus 180 will give us 720. Okay, I'll copy this on the next page. I have 36 times x minus 2 squared plus 20 times y plus 3 squared equals 720. Okay, right. Um, remember, yung sa ating standard equation, 1 po itong right side. So, para maging 1 yan, magde-divide tayo ng 720 both sides. Yan. And ang mangyayari na dito, simplify, x minus 2 squared, 36 divided by 70, 720 is actually may matitirang 20 dito. Diba? Uh, 36, 36 all over 720, that is 1 all over 20. Kaya 20 na lang yung matitira dun sa denominator. Ganon din po kay 20 all over 720. Pinaghiwalay ko na lang sila. Okay, ganito na nga lang para hindi kayo malito. So, 36 all over 720. Pwede natin silang paghiwalayin. Tig-isa sila ng denominator. 
Dapat pala yun na yung kaagad na ginawa ko. 720 divided by 720 is 1. 36 all over 720 is 1 all over 20. So, may 20 pang matitira sa baba. Tapos, dito naman sa y, 20 all over 720 is 36. So, y plus 3 squared all over 36. Again, to make it in standard equation, we have to uh, express it as a square. Uh, wala pong problema kay y plus 3 squared divided by 36 is 6 squared. So, no problem. Because it's a perfect square. So, paano naman po pag hindi po perfect square yung 20? So, remember, ang square root ng 20 at in square mo is the same as 20. Alright? So, pwede natin gamitin yung relationship na yan. To express 20 as a square, lagyan mo lang ng square root. Squared. And actually, square root of 20 can be expressed as... Uh, ang square root ng 20 ay... ay square root ng 4 times 5. Si 4 ay perfect square, so you can get 2 square root of 5 squared. Yan. So, you can rewrite it further and simplify it further. x minus 2 times 2 square root of 5 squared plus y plus 3 squared all over 6 squared equals 1. So, ito na yung problema dahil hindi natin masyadong gamay ang kailangan natin mo ng calculator or you can estimate if you want kung nasaan si A at B dyan. Okay? It's either 6 or 2 square to 5. Pero sinong mas malaki? Si 6 or si 2 square to 5? Mas malaki si 6. So, A equals 6 and B is equal to 2 square root of 2. Kasi, always remember, mas malaki po si A. Palagi, dun sa definition natin, A should always be greater than B. So, ibig sabihin, yung A natin or yung semi-major axis natin is under y squared. Nasa ilalim siya ng y plus 3 squared to be specific. Ibig sabihin, yung major axis natin is patayo vertical kasi nandoon yung y or yung major axis natin is nasa y-axis. Kasi nga, under ng A, si y. Uh, under ng y, si A. So, and by inspection dito, yung center natin is wala po sa 0, 0 kasi may naka-minus kay x at saka y. So, by inspection, ang center po natin is nasa hk. At ano po yun? Okay. X minus 2 squared ito. So, ang ating H is positive 2. So, kagaya din lang ginagawa natin sa um, circle and parabola. Uh, binabaliktad natin yung sign. Kung negative 2 yan, positive 2 yung ating H. Sa Y, positive 3 yan. So, ang ating K ay negative 3. Okay. Kasi sa standard equation, naka-minus yan. So, dapat binabaliktad mo para kunin yung coordinates. So, ang center natin is 2, negative 3. Okay, tandaan natin yung major axis natin is vertical. So, dapat mas mahaba yung sa may bandang patayo. So, pahaba siya na patayo. So, ganito yung magiging itsura po ng ating ellipse. Patayo siya. O, mas mahaba siya sa patayo. <laughs> mas mahaba siya sa patayo. Sorry. Okay, yung center natin is a 2, negative 3, as you can see, yung point C. Okay, para makuha po yung vertex, vertices, dahil kalinya siya ni center at nandun po siya sa major axis at ang kanilang, ang semi, length ng semi-major axis natin is 6. So, dahil nga patayo, sa Y tayo mag-aad. 
Okay, ang V1 natin at V2, kalinya siya ni center, pero patayo yung ellipse. So, sa Y lang tayo magdadagdag bawas. So, parehas sila ng X coordinate. Y patayo. So, yung Y lang ang mababago. Okay, X, Y. Y coordinate lang ang mababago. Bakit? Kasi po, patayo po yung ellipse natin. Yung vertex natin ay nasa, ay yung major axis natin. Yung dulo nun ay vertex. So, yung vertex ay nasa, semi -major, uh, nasa major axis. Yung vertex ay kalinya ni C. So, parehas sila ng X. At dahil patayo, Y lang yung mababago. So, saan tayo magdadagbag bawas? Dito sa center. Negative 3 yung center natin. Para makuha yung V1, si V1 ay mas mababa kay C ng ilan? Remember, ang distance niyan is A. So, babawasan natin ng 6 kasi A is 6. Okay? C center. So, negative 3 minus 6. Ang coordinate ng vertex 1 is 2, negative 9. Binawasan natin ng 6 kasi A equals 6 ayon sa ating standard equation. Yung pangalawang vertex is nasa taas, of course, ng ating center. So, same distance pa rin. That is A. But A is 6. So, this time, dahil nasa taas siya, pataas tayo, mag a tayo ng 6. So, negative 3 plus 6, that is positive 3. Ayan. How about yung covertex? Dito ko na isisingit. Covertex. W1, W2. Ang covertex is nasa gilid. B naman. Ang B natin is 2 square root of 5. 2 square root of 5 is approximately 4 point something. 4.5 Let me check O oh, tama, 4.5 Okay, to be Mas accurate, 4.47 So, halos 4.5 Sabi na natin So, magmove tayo ng 4.5 This time Ang covertices natin po Ay Pahiga siya, kasi yung major axis Natin patayo Ayan. So, this time, yung covertices is still kalinya pa rin ng center, pero uh, perpendicular na siya. Dahil ang minor axis ay perpendicular sa major axis, ang babaguhin naman natin ngayon is sa x naman. Sa vertex, yung y yung binago natin kasi patayo nga po yung ating ellipse. Para sa covertices, X naman. So, parehas sila ng Y. Ayan. Parehas na negative 3. Parehas sila kay center. Babuguhin natin is yung kanyang X. Plus minus ulit. Anong ipa plus, mas, plus minus natin? 2 square root of 5. So, that is for W1 dahil nasa left siya, magma minus tayo. So, 2 Hindi ko alam kung kasha pa to. 2 minus 2 square root of 5. And then yung W2, dahil to the right, mag add tayo. 2 plus 2 square root of 5. Okay, how about the focus? For the focus, dapat kunin muna natin yung C. And from yung relationship natin kanina, a squared minus b squared. Square root. That is, 6 squared minus 2 square root of 5 squared. Sorry. Uh, that is, solve natin, 36 ito. Yung 2 square root of 5 squared is 20. So, square root ng 36 minus 20 is the square root of 16. The square root of 16 is 4. Okay, so ang center to focus natin ay 4. Anong babagahin natin? X, Y. 
Tandaan natin, si focus po ay kalinya ni vertex. So, kung uh, ganun din ang gagawin natin, um, parehas pa rin sila ng x. Okay? Kung anong ginawa natin kay, uh, kung anong uh, ano na analysis natin kay vertex, kasi magkalinya naman sila eh. Yan. So, ang mababago lang kay center, focus, at vertex is yung kanilang y-coordinates lang. So, parehas pa rin sila ng x-coordinate na 2. Yung kanilang, yung foci natin, yung y-vertex nila, distance is c, but c is 4. So, ito ay c. Ito din ay c. So, plus minus c lang ulit tayo dun sa y ng center. Ang y ng center ay negative 3. So, for focus 1, nasa baba siya, negative 3 minus 4, that is negative 7. For focus 2, nasa taas, so mag a tayo ng 4. Negative 3 plus 1, that is, ah sorry, negative 3 plus 4, that is positive 1. Yun na. Kompleto na. Center, vertex, vertex, covertex, covertex, focus, focus. Tig the dalawa. And of course, yung graph, as you can see, nandito na po. Okay, para sa hyperbola, hyperbola, halos magkamukha magkamukha lang sila ng definition ni ellipse. Dalawa din po yung ating reference point. Still, F1 and F2 are two distinct points. Pero this time, imbis na sum, kung sa ellipse, yung sum ng distances from the two fixed points are always is always constant. Dito, yung difference ng dalawang di, uh, ng distances from two fixed points, constant. Sa ellipse, sum, sa hyperbola, difference. At yung form natin is called hyperbola. And still, yung dalawang uh, distinct points na yun are called the foci of the hyperbola. So, ano magiging itsura ngayon ng hyperbola? Ganito po ang itsura ng hyperbola at ang kanyang equation with center at the origin. Sa ellipse, plus sa hyperbola, minus po yung gitna. Hindi sila parehas ng uh, equation. Hindi sila parehas ng sign. Minus yung nandoon sa gitna ni hyperbola. Sa ellipse, laging plus yan. Sa hyperbola, difference kasi. So, minus din. Yung nasa gitna. Okay. Doon sa ellipse kanina, kahit sino yung mauna. Kasi plus naman yun eh. Kahit sino yung mauna, basta ang paratandaan natin kung nasaan yung mas malaki dun sa ilalim. Para dito sa hyperbola, laging yung nauuna ay kung nasaan yung mas malaki sa ilalim. See? When the axis or what we call the transverse axis ng hyperbola ay horizontal, nasa ilalim ni x yung mas malaki na a squared. Kung yung transverse axis is perpendicular or nasa parallel with the y axis or patayo siya or vertical, nasa ilalim na y yung mas malaking a squared. At, tandaan nyo, laging nauuna yung mas malaki. Unlike doon sa ano kanina, sa ellipse, pwedeng ano, pwede sila magkapalitan kasi plus nga. Dito sa ellipse, hindi pwede, laging inuuna natin yung kung nasaan yung transverse axis or nasa yung mas malaking um, denominator. Ayan. Okay, ulitin natin na ang difference nila sa ellipse minus yung nasa gitna. At laging nauuna 
is kung nasaan yung A. Okay, i-define natin yung mga A. Ba, sir, parehas ba sila sa A, B, and C? Okay. Yung A, yun po yung distance from vertex to our center. Yung center to focus natin, from one center to focus, ang notation or denoted by C pa rin. C pa rin ito. From one focus papunta sa center, C pa rin yung distance. Ganon din dito sa kabila, from center to focus, C pa rin yun. O, parehas sila sa uh, A. Uh, parehas sila sa ellipse. Center to vertex, A pa rin. Center, papunta kay vertex, A pa rin. Ayan. Wala pa rin pinagkaiba dun sa notation natin. Center to vertex, A pa rin. So, nasa na si B? Saan yung mamemeasure si B? Wala na si B. Okay. I mean, meron pa rin siya, pero hindi na siya visually, hindi mo siya makikita dito, mamaya pa, uh, pa, sabihin ko kung saan siya makikita. Pero as you can see, kung yung center to focus ay C, at yung center to vertex ay A, sino ang mas malaki sa kanila? Sino ang mas mahaba? Di ba mas malayo si focus? Dun sa ellipse, mas malakit sa center si focus kaysa kay vertex. Dito sa hyperbola, baliktad. Mas malapit si vertex kay focus or mas mahaba si center to focus kaysa kay center to vertex. So, kung sa ellipse, for ellipse, A is greater than C, dito sa hyperbola, baliktad po, C is greater than A. And therefore, may iba na yung relationship natin kanina. So, the, for hyperbola, ito na yung kamukha mismo ni Pythagorean Theorem. Ito na yung relationship. Kasi si C na yung pinakamahaba. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Si ellipse, okay, wag tayo mali dito ha, kinukumpare ko lang. Si ellipse, mas malaki si A kesa kay C. Kaya yung relationship natin is A squared plus B squared. Ah, sorry. A squared equals B squared plus C squared. For hyperbola, dahil mas malaki or mas mahaba si C, ito na po yung relationship natin. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Nabalik, yun lang naman yung nabago. Okay. Ano po yung parts ng hyperbola? Meron pa rin tayong center. Yes, check. Meron pa rin tayong vertex. Dalawang vertices pa rin. Dalawang foci pa rin. Okay. Yung vertex 1 to vertex 2, V1, V2, yung line na ito, from V1 to V2, yun po yung tinatawag nating conjugate, ah sorry, transverse axis. And of course, as you can see, ang length nyan is 2A. No, kasi A nga yung center to vertex, A yan. So, yung vertex to vertex, of course, that is 2A. Ayan. Okay? Kung yung transverse axis po natin, Okay, yung transverse axis is, <coughs> um, correction lang, no? <coughs> uh, contains, yun. Ay, contained pala. Yung transverse axis kasi, uh, ano yan, kompleto yan, linya yan. Hindi lang siya hanggang dyan sa V1, V2. 
Okay? Yan yung transverse axis. Yung magde-divide sa hyperbola natin. Uh, line of symmetry, kumbaga. Na horizontal. Kung yung transverse axis natin ay horizontal, nandoon po sa ilalim niya, si A squared ay nasa ilalim ni X squared. Conversely, kung yung A squared ay nasa ilalim ni X squared, dapat yung transverse axis natin ay horizontal. Ganyan, ganito ang magiging itsura dapat. Uh, left and right dapat yung ating hyperbola. Pero kung yung transverse axis natin ay vertical, as you can see dito, nasa ilalim ni y squared yung a squared. So, up and down naman yung hyperbola natin. Conversely, kapag si a squared ay nasa ilalim ni y squared, dapat ang magiging itsura ng hyperbola natin is up and down yung transverse axis dapat vertical. Meron din tayong tinatawag na conjugate axis. Conjugate axis is perpendicular with the transverse axis. So, kung ito yung dadaan kay V1, V2 yung ating transverse axis, ito yung conjugate axis natin. Perpendicular siya. Ayan. Dito sa center at origin, yung y-axis mismo, yung ating conjugate axis. Kapag horizontal yung transverse axis. Sa kabila, kapag vertical yung transverse axis, yung conjugate axis natin is horizontal and it is actually the x-axis. Tandaan natin, si transverse axis at si conjugate axis ay dumadaan lagi sa center. Yung intersection nila is yung center. Okay. Transverse axis, conjugate axis. Meron din tayong tinatawag na asymptote. Sir, ano yung asymptote? Asymptote is an imaginary line, or sabi mo lang line, na ito yun, ito, ito, ito. Yan, yung, et, yan, yung diagonal yan. Dalawang asymptotes. Asymptote seems to be the limit ng hyperbola. Ibig sabihin, no matter how kahit extend natin yan, itong hyperbola, kung nandito yung asymptote, hindi niya marireach. So, an asymptote is an imaginary line or a line na kailanman hindi marireach ng hyperbola. So, para siyang hangganan, kumbaga, para hindi magtagpo itong dalawang parts ng hyperbola. Kasi para siyang dalawang parabola na nagkatapat, diba? mirror sila yung hangganan nila is itong asymptote. Kahit anong lapit natin dyan, kahit anong lapit ng hyperbola dyan, hindi yan marireach, hindi niya marireach yung asymptote na yan. Asymptotes, kasi dalawa. Okay. Yung asymptote, actually, is the diagonal of yung tinatawag nating auxiliary rectangle. As you can see dito, meron tayong parang dotted Uh, meron tayong imaginary rectangle sa gitna. Ito yung tinatawag nating auxiliary. Anong spelling ng auxilia? Auxiliary. Ganyan ba? Double L ba? Auxiliary rectangle. Okay. Ano yung auxiliary rectangle? Yung auxiliary rectangle is uh, meron siyang length and width na 2A. As you can see, A, A. Tapos, yung kanyang, yung isang dimension niya is B, B. B, B. Yan po yan. So, uh, 2A at saka 2B. Yung diagonal ng auxiliary rectangle, doon dumadaan actually yung asymptotes. Ito po, ayan. Okay, the diagonals of the uh, 
the auxiliary rectangle contains the asymptotes. So, yung auxiliary rectangle, kaya siya tinapang auxiliary, actually, guide lang yan para madrawing mo ng tama yung asymptotes. Okay, para makuha yung asymptotes, kasi nga, line yan, so meron yung equation. That is still a part of our hyperbola. Para makuha mo yung equation, i-equate mo lang sa zero yung standard. Ito. Kung yan yung uh, equation ng parabola mo, para makuha mo yung equation ng uh, asymptotes, equate mo lang sa zero. So, imbis na equal sa 1, gawin mong zero. That is, gagawin mong kung horizontal yung transverse axis, x squared all over a squared, minus y squared all over b squared equals 0. Tapos, isosolve mo si y. So, solving for y, transpose mo siya magiging positive, cross multiply, b squared all over a squared x squared, square root square root. So, y equals positive negative b all over a x. Ito yung equation ng asymptotes natin. Isang positive, isang negative. Partner yan. Ganon din ang gagawin mo kapag uh, pataas naman or up and down yung hyperbola mo or yung kanyang transverse axis ay vertical. Equate mo lang din ulit si 0, then solve for y. Yung makukuha mong uh, equation, yun yung equation ng line or ng asymptotes. Okay, let's try to solve examples. Ah, okay. Uh, I forgot. To generalize the standard equation for hyperbola with center, sorry, that is not origin, center at any point, hk, Uh, ganun lang din po yung gagawin natin like for the other conic sections. Lalagyan lang natin ng minus h and minus k sa x and y. h kasama ni x, k kasama ni y. <coughs> okay. Example, we are tasked to give the coordinates of the center for psi vertices and asymptotes of the hyperbola with a given equation. We are also tasked to graph, include all these points and lines, the transverse and conjugate axis, and the auxiliary rectangle. Okay, for number one, here it is very, again, very straightforward because it is almost a standard equation. We just need to rewrite or express the denominator as a perfect square. 25 is 5 squared. And x minus 7 squared is 3 squared. Okay. Um, this is one convenience for hyperbola because you know kung nasaan ka agad yung ating transverse axis. Kung sino talaga yung nandito sa una. No. Yung negative kasi, siya yung na conjugate axis. So, yung mas malaki, laging siya yung nauuna dito. Unlike kapag sa ellipse, huhulaan mo pa sinong mas malaki and then sino yung nasa yung major and minor. Dito, alam mo na kung sino yung nauna, siya dapat. Okay, so 5 squared minus 3 squared. Sorry, 5 squared yung sa A. And then, yung B natin is 3. Okay. Don't be confused ha. Sa ellipse kasi, ang palatandaan po natin, kung nasan si A, which is A is laging mas malaki kay B, nandoon po si major axis. This is for ellipse. Okay, ang palatandaan natin is kung nasaan nakapailalim sa A squared. Sa hyperbola po, hindi po. Okay? There is no specific relationship between A and B. Okay? Okay? Kasi si C na yung pinakamalaki. We all know that C is greater than A and C is greater than B. 
but we do not know actually oh there's no specific relation for A and B so ibig sabihin pwede pong mas malaki si B kay A nagkataon lang dito sa ating example na mas malaki si A kay B okay ang palatandaan po natin para po sa graph is kung sino po yung nauuna okay hindi po ang palatandaan natin is kung sino yung mas malaki sa ilalim sa ellipse kasi ganun po yung palatandaan natin di ba kung sino yung mas malaki yung ilalim yun yung major axis dito po sa hyperbola hindi ang palatandaan natin is kung sino yung positive or kung sino yung, na, sino yung nauna okay pero still, kung sino yung nauna, yun lagi yung nasa ilalim ni A. A lagi yung nasa ilalim niya. Kahit ba magkabaliktad yan, for example, naging 9 ito, or naging 3 squared yan, tsaka 5 squared ito, kahit na mas maliit siya, si 3 kesa kay 5, kung siya yung nauna or siya yung positive, siya po dapat si A. Magiging 3 dapat si A, tsaka si 5 si B. Okay, tandaan po natin yan. Ang palatandaan natin is kung sino yung nauna. At kung sino yung, na, sino yung nauna, siya po lagi yung nasa ilalim ay A. Unlike po sa ellipse, yung mas malaki yung hinahanap natin at si mas malaki, yun po lagi yung A. Dito yung nauna. Okay, paulit-ulit ako. Pero nilinaw ko lang. And pwede na natin kaagad isolve na natin si C. Because c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So, c is the square root of a squared plus b squared. And that would give us the square root of 5 squared plus 3 squared. That is 25 plus 9. That is square root of 34. And square root of 34 is not a perfect square. So, ganyan na lang. Obviously, ang center natin is kung ano po yung naka-minus kay y and x. So, ang center po natin, hk is, unahin natin si x, 7, tapos, k, negative 2. So, ang center natin is, 7, negative 2. Vertex, v1, v2. Vertex po natin ay, ayun sa drawing, Dahil nasa il ang um, nauna si y squared so patayo up and down po sorry um kung it nasaan si center 7 negative 2 7 siguro nandito yung center c nasa il uh, nauna si y squared so patayo po yung ano natin hyperbola up and down sabi natin ganyan so, rough sketch lang po, ah, hindi siya accurate. Therefore, yung vertex natin is nandito, tsaka nandito. Magkalinya pa rin po yung vertex, tsaka center, tsaka focus. So, dahil patayo siya, pare-parehas po sila ng, again, x. Ang babaguhin lang po natin is yung y, kasi up-down tayo. Okay? sabi natin, si v1 ay nasa taas. And therefore, mag adjust tayo, mag add tayo kay negative 2 ng ilan. Ang center to vertex is A pa rin. So, mag add tayo ng 5 kay negative 2. Negative 2 plus 5 is positive 3. And then, for V2, nasa baba siya. So, negative 2 minus 5 naman this time kasi nasa baba. That is negative 7. So, yan po yung mga vertex. Focus. 1 and focus 2. So, ta tawagin na natin, nandito si focus 1. Nandito si focus 2. Si focus 1 and focus 2, remember, nasa loob siya nung, parang parabola, nasa loob siya nung uh, hyperbola. So, nasolve na natin yung distance from center to focus, which is C. And that is equal to square root of 34. Magkakalinya ulit po yan. So, parehas din sila ng X. That is 7 and 7. So, we are going to add negative 2 plus C, that is plus square root of 34. Okay, para mas eksakto. 
And then, kasi si F1 po ay nasa taas ni C. Si F2 ay nasa baba ni C. So, magma-minus naman tayo ng negative square root of 34. Saan po galing yung square root of 34? Yun po yung C. Bakit? Kasi yun po yung definition natin ng center to focus distance, which is C. Ayan. Vertex, vertex, focus, focus. Center. Ano pang kulang natin? Okay, asymptote. Para may drawing po si asymptote, kailangan nating i-drawing muna yung auxiliary rectangle. Yung auxiliary rectangle ay A and B. So, dito po siya. Okay, alam na natin na yung A, ito yon. Ayan, ito yung A. Vertex to vertex. Nasaan si B? Mula kay vertex, mag-measure ka ng B, which is 3 units. Mag-measure ka din ng B, 3 units. Ganon din kay vertex 2, 3 units, 3 units. And then, madudrawing mo na yung rectangle. Ayan. Ito, kunwari, <laughs> kunwari, rough sketch ng auxiliary rectangle. And then, dapat dadaan yung diagonal. Yung asymptote ay dadaan dun sa center at dadaan as a diagonal ng ating auxiliary rectangle. Ayan po. Ganyan po. Oh my God. Okay. How about, how do we get the How do we get the equation of the asymptotes? Balikan po natin yung ginuha, ginawa nating standard equation. Copy ko lang siya dito sa kabila. Okay. Y plus 2 squared equals 5 squared equals I minus X minus 7 squared all over 3 squared equals 1. To solve for the equation of the asymptotes, I-equate natin sa 0 ito. So, imbis na 1, gagawin natin 0. And then, we solve for y. That means, ita-transpose natin. So, simplify muna si 5 squared. Gawin mo ng 25. Transpose natin yung x. So, it will become positive x minus 7 squared divided by 3 squared is 9. Plus multiply y plus 2 squared equals 25 times x minus 7 squared divided by 9. Square root, square root, square, square root both sides. Y plus 2 yung right side. And then, uh, square root of 25 and square root of 9 is perfect square. 5 all over 3. Square root ng x minus 7 squared is x minus 7. Okay, trans, uh, distribute 5 all over 3, 5 all over 3x. Actually, that is positive negative. Kasi dalawa po yung equation natin. So, positive negative 3. Uh, let's distribute that into 2. Unahin natin yung plus. So, y plus 2 equals... 5 over 3 times x minus 7 or y plus 2 equals distribute 5 thirds. So, 5 thirds x minus 35 all over 3. Y equals sorry. Transpose ko po si positive 2 Minus 2. Y equals. Uh, simplify na lang. 35 all over 3. Negative 35 all over 3 minus 2 is. 41. All over 3. Ayan. Ayan. Yan yung isang asymptote.
nasan po yung pangalawa? Kasi positive negative to. So, yung pangalawa is, gawin nating negative naman. Y plus 2 equals negative 5 thirds times x minus 7. Y equals negative 5 third x plus 35 all over 3. May plus 2 pa pala dito. Lilipat ko na si 2. So, y equals negative 5 third x plus 35 all over 3 minus 2. That is y equals negative 5 third x. 35 all over 3 minus 2 is plus 35 minus 6. Twenty nine all over three. Yeah. Asymptote one, asymptote two. Finish na ba? Four side vertices asymptotes. Sketch the graph into these points and lines and transverse conjugate axis and the auxiliary rectangle. Okay, hindi natin nalagay yung transverse axis. Yung transverse, yung dadaan kay V1, V2, at saka focus. Nandito lang naman yan. Ayan. So, lalagyan mo lang siya ng isang linya. And yung transverse, ay yung conjugate is yung line na perpendicular sa transverse, pero dadaan din sa center. Ayun. This is the conjugate. This is the transverse. So, yung mas maayos na graph is ito. Mhm. Mm And so magkakaiba yung ano definition ng transverse kasi yung ibang uh, book Yung transverse is ito lang, V1, V2. Ito lang mismo. Yung iba naman is in-include na yung line, in-extend siya. 